Hello everybody and welcome to the Sim Aviation channel. Uh, today we are going to look uh, to the settings, uh, which settings I use for P2D on my uh, yeah, relatively mid-range or even low-range computer. Uh, because I'm not using a high-end computer, I use only an i5 4460 3.2GHz not overclocked CPU together with 16 gigabytes of RAM and an, a GTX 960 4 gigabyte VRAM uh, graphics cards. So definitely not high-end, uh, but I think and I know that a lot of people don't use high-end computers, but most tutorials they are all uh, based on high-end computers. I thought maybe my video will help the more low-end mid-range computers. Also uh, bear in mind that the settings that I'm going to show you work very well on my system. They may not work on your systems how they work on my systems, but if you change the values, uh, they in the end they will work. But you need to tinker with them if your uh, computer yeah, differentiates a lot of my computer. So bear in mind with that, uh, and in the end if you tinker a lot with it, you get much higher performance as you have now very low performance for example. Uh, than before. So let's dive straight in it. So the P3D settings, uh, the general tab I go uh, briefly uh, through them. Ah, first application, everything is default except the screenshot format I change to BMP. Information everything is off except of the show primary info text. I have this enabled so I can see my frames per second but have nothing else in my screen. Sounds is default, traffic everything is off, latency vehicles I don't bother and aviation traffic I use VETSIM so I don't use the uh, aviation traffic uh, generated by P2T. Realism everything is set at maximum realism except of the ignore crashes and damages because I use uh, VETSIM and there are sometimes uh, yeah, stupid people uh, who go through you and otherwise if you don't have this uh, you, you get a crash message and you start all over. The graphics cards uh, I use a GTX 960. I have my FXAA. I set it on off. Uh, I run four times MSAA. Uh, I have this on the highest. Um, it really does not affect any performance. So put it on the highest, and you have the the best texture filtering. Texture resolution is on high. My resolution. I use a full HD monitor, so it's put on full HD. Blackout monitor is not enabled. V-Syncs I have enabled and tri with triple buffering put on target frame rate of 30. This gives the most smooth performance for my sim with my graphic card. Now for the world the level of detail radius is on high, translation factor is on high. Uh, I don't have it on ultra otherwise my GPU uh, will be melted um, or if I put it on the lowest my CPU will be melted. So in between here this is perfect balance with uh, my CPU and my GPU. Mass resolution 4 meters and texture resolution on 30 centimeters. Then you have a button here uh, below use high resolution train textures. Uh, you always need to enable this. It's really strange but if you uh, do not enable this um, you get lower performance if you enable this. So you need to enable this to get higher performance but also to yeah, increase your uh, terrain texture. So this is a win-win. For the scenery, scenery complexity is on dense uh, because if you put it lower, some buildings on some uh, add-ons airports will be uh, will be gone, so you don't want to have that. Autogen is on medium. Um, Autogen vegetation and buildings I put on normal because most of the time you fly at very high altitudes and you yeah you don't see your buildings and your uh, cars for example or, t or trees, so. Yeah, it's really no point for me to have it higher than normal and when I'm on approach the trees and everything is loading before I get there so I still see the trees. Dynamic 3D autogen need to be off. Uh, if you take this on uh, you struggle really well with performance so put them off and uh, yeah, you will always be fine. Water detail on low I don't bother. A reflection on only on user vehicles. Now lighting HDR is enabled uh, because I use tomato shade. Uh, with this setting I use the R&D with a little bit of tweaking of the brightness and the saturation depending on your monitor so this gives the best value for my monitor dynamic reflection is on medium to see the dynamic reflection I do not take display lens flare I think it's not very realistic to see the sun glare uh, because this reflects sun glare and then you see those uh, yeah, circles if you look to the sun so yeah, I don't think those are very realistic so I don't take them Shadow quality is on medium and shadow draw distance is on high so I can see very far the shadows already on 
yeah medium settings I think those look fine yeah I can bump them up uh, it it hits some performance I can have it but I think mediums look the most uh, perfect for my so those are my P3D settings uh, but yeah my P3D works with different add-ons uh, because P3D is not the only uh, thing that you can tweak for example I use Active Sky Active Sky for the weather engine so let's start uh, Active Sky up now the Active Sky settings Active Sky is an add-on for your weather uh, and I think that is a must-have if you fly on X-Plane or P3D but Active Sky if you have it uh, yeah, not really set up correctly it can heavily impact your performance of your sim so firstly the genera general options uh, I only change the download interval to 10 instead of 15 uh, so to have much frequently a uh, much quicker new uh, engine the l of uh, new weather the latest weather and the rest is all on default simulation it's also simulator is also normal cloud options I set it on four layers this maximum cloud layer uh, really impact your performance if you put it uh, value higher with the settings that I have you really impact your frames um, so I put it on four I think that's perfect you have all uh, sorts of cloud layers available so yeah, I think that is, uh, that's perfect for my settings uh, the maximum cloud turbulence I put on 100 now clouding icing is also normal um, minimum cloud uh, dwell distance is on 60 uh, as you have saw on my P2D settings this match with each other so they are both on 60 and the maximum cloud distance is on 139 uh, yeah it can also be 140 it doesn't really matter but not much higher than 130 I, I suggest uh, besides it really impacts your frames and the rest is on uh, on standard then yeah, the wind option maximum surface 100 uh, but all the other options they don't really affect your performance of your simulator uh, but one of the most one is the maximum cloud layer. This one affects the performance of your sim the most of of all uh, settings that you have in Active Sky. Yeah, the NVIDIA uh, profile. I don't uh, change a lot. I only changed one setting uh, because everything can be uh, uh, set in the P2D settings. So yeah, the inspector is not really necessary. But what is very important and very necessary is if you go to common. Uh, point 0.5 you have your power management mode put it on on prefer maximum performance you always get the maximum performance out of your GPU that's possible uh, which gives you better frames in your simulator and that's in the end the thing that you want um, so this is very important put power management mode on prefer maximum performance this really really helps a lot and last but not least my CFG of prepared back in the days of FS6 you put a lot of tweaks in here to uh, yeah, increase your performance of your sim but with P2D uh, V4 yeah, it's, not it's not really necessary uh, I need to say because the settings of P2D manage P2D very well uh, for your performance uh, but there are still some tweaks that you can apply in here uh, for some people it uh, increases the performance and for other people it decreases the performance and I have added one tweak and that's a tweak which a lot of people yeah not really happy about but some are and in my case I am really happy about it it's the fiber frame time fraction this tweak uh, helps with the blurry ground textures which a lot of people have I had it it was very terrible and I added this tweak in uh, and I tinkered around with the settings back here and now I've always very crisp uh, ground textures with a smooth performance in the sim um, what this value say is in my case now from each frame 0 0.1 frame is used for the ground texture and 0 0.9 frame is used for everything else if you increase this uh, value for example to 5 then uh, half of your frame is used for the count and half of it it is used for everything else so increasing this number will decrease or can decrease your performance in your sim uh, and lower it will increase your performance but decrease your uh, blurry of your sharpening for your ground textures yeah I found that the perfect setup of my is 0 
uh, yeah it runs very well I've always clear ground textures uh, with smooth performance there are a lot of people which have terrible frames with it so my uh, advice is use it test it yourself and see if this works for you it worked for me uh, but other t uh, other uh, tweaks which for other people work yeah they don't work for me uh, so I only have this tweak in my CFG at the moment so guys these are my settings uh, which uh, which I all use for my system yeah keep in mind that this uh, settings very well for my system they may not work for your system as how they work for my system but if you tweak your settings uh, you will get the same end result as I have it um, yeah, if you have any questions drop down a comment if you want to see other videos drop down a comment uh, and otherwise for more videos subscribe and I see you next time bye